Hey, welcome to Programming Rainbow. In this video, we will be continuing on the series where we're working on configuring NeoVim and NVChad. So that is what we're working on this video. We're going to be adding the Go language to our NVChad setup. So I'm going to be working with the setup that we finished off with the very first NeoVim NVChad video. So you don't need anything else besides that. You'll want to already have followed that video. This video will just be adding on from there, adding the Go language. So you don't need to watch the C, C++ video. This is standalone from that. So if you want to follow along with this video, you can go to github.com, Programming Rainbow, and then this will be NVChad 2.5. This is the same repository that we've been using for all of the NVChad videos. So this contains all the information from the original video, and then all the way down where we get to C++. Here's the C and C++ update. We're not going to be doing that today. That's in a different video. And here is Golang, or Go, however you want to say it. OK, so that's what we'll be working with. So let's look at a Go project, see what it looks like before we have set anything up for Go. So this is just the way that NVChat is set up from our prior video without doing anything for Go. OK, so I'm going to look at an Asteroids game project written in Go. Let's look at the, and we have some kind of a, a tiny little bit of syntax highlighting going on colors, but not much. It's not really tree sitter is not set up yet. We have no language server set up. We have no formatting. We have no linting. So if I were to make some errors here, we shouldn't get any kind of, it doesn't, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't give an error or anything. If we were to say change the, where it's tabbed in, that doesn't do anything when I save it. So we have basically nothing going on here. And even the syntax highlighting does not look correct because most of it is just white. OK, so we're going to start from tree sitter since that'll give us syntax highlighting right away. So if you are following this, we're just going to go down to where it says Golang. And what I want to do is I actually want to look at tree sitter first because it's the easiest thing. We just need to add the languages in here, there's actually a list of all the languages. And we're going to be kind of looking at in anything to do with Go today. So here's Go. There's also Go Mod, Go Sum, and Go Works. Those are the four. If you have your own things that you want to add, that's fine. But I'm going to use those four today. That's kind of what I'm focused on. And it is also available inside of uh, NeoVim. It'll tell you that as well. So we're just going to add these right away to our tree sitter config. I am going to go over here to here, but I'm going to pull up a second terminal to actually configure NeoVim so I can not have to switch back and forth. So right now I'm in my, um, my local config in Vim folder. And what we're looking for is in Lua configs and we're going down to tree sitter and I'm going to kind of leave these in alphabetical order so under fish I'm going to add them and I should put a comma I think we had go mod go sum and go work something like that Let's So that is pretty easy. I'm just going to save it right here. And I don't need to worry about this since this is actually a different terminal I have. So back in here, I'm going to shut this down and restart this one. And when I go to open up a Go file, tree sitter should kick in and automatically start downloading the languages. So I'm going to go into, say, game.go. Hmm. I wonder if I wrote something wrong there. Well, it is adding. It's adding three, not four. So let's let's look at this real quick. 
Oh, I put ghost son instead of ghost sum. That's why it gave me that strange message there. So I'm going to close this again and open it again. So it, it should say, since it's already done the three languages, it should say it's getting one more language. There we go. We got one language coming in on the bottom. And we can look at our syntax highlighting, and it looks much nicer now. Before, all of this right here in the game struct was all just white. So now it, it, we have different colors for functions, for you know variables, different things like that. So that is pretty simple, straightforward. You know, we could have also used the TS install, say, let's go info. And this will also tell us what we can install, just like the uh, GitHub page for NVIM tree sitter, and also what is installed. So if we go down to Go, we have Go is installed, Go mod, Go sum, and Go work. Okay, so that was pretty easy. That's pretty straightforward. Let's move on to the next thing. So the next thing we want to do is probably set up a language server. So the language server is going to be a little bit more complicated here. We've got some stuff going on. So the first thing we're going to do is add go please to our LS config servers. And the only thing that this does, remember, is this is just adding an entry into a table so that our Mason LSP config can then download it for us. So this isn't actually configuring anything. This is just getting Mason to get go please for us automatically. But down here, we're going to actually configure it, okay? So I am going to grab this, and we're going to walk through it. We're going to kind of look at the site that, that deals with this. But just remember, this is a table that I created in the prior video just to make it easier for, for Mason LSP config to automatically download packages for us. So this is the my pop-up terminal that I'm using, my scratch terminal, is where I'm configuring NVIM. So again, these right here, Mason conform, Mason lint, Mason LSP config, these are things that I'm using to automatically download and install Mason packages for me. So LSP config is what's, in, what's configuring all the language servers for me. But I've just basically created my own table here in LSP config called servers, and then that is being picked up in Mason LSP config, and it's going through it right here. LSP servers, it's doing a for loop in there, and it's any of anything that's not in the um, ignore installed list. It's going to autom It's going to create a list of all those servers that needs to be installed, and then tell Mason to install it. So that's just for automatic. So if you don't have Go Please installed on your system, you want Mason to install it for you. That's what you're going to do. So I'm going to close tree sitter. We don't need this anymore. And right here, this is where we're going to use go please. And again, that's just going to download it for us. It's not going to tell it to use it or anything. If we want to use a default configuration, we would add go please right here. And we can just try that real quick. We could put it here. You just put go please here. I'm going to save this. I'm just going to close the scratch terminal and switch back over to my other terminal. So I'm going to close this down and restart it, and we should get go please automatically installing now, and we should get um, a, some, a basic LSP service running. Okay, so I'm just going to close it. Now when I open it back up, now we have installing go please down here at the bottom. That's because of the changes that we made here. When I put go please here, it, when we start up in Vim, it's going to make sure that this is installed. And when I open up a go file, since I put it in default service, it's going to run this for loop on it, and it's going to set up just a default setup for it. Okay, so right now if we open up some file, we should get go please running. And here we go. We have go please running down here. So we're going to have some basic stuff. We probably have almost everything out of the box working, but I'm not going to use all the defaults. 
So we do have formatting happening. We also have linting happening. So just with the default configuration, you, you really got just everything basically working. Go please is really good. But we are gonna, I'm gonna use a different formatter or several different formatters other than the default go please one. Uh, we are gonna use the default linter so we won't be changing the linting, um, but we will be changing the, and we will change some different things about the linting of go please. So again, I'm just gonna leave this open. I'm gonna open up the secondary one. Actually, we, we need to go over here. I'm gonna grab this configuration. We're gonna talk about it. This is gonna be, instead of using the default configuration, we're gonna be using setting up our own version. So I'm gonna remove it from this default right here where it says default servers. That's gonna run this for loop. I don't want it running the for loop. I'm gonna go down here. Like we, we made our own configuration for Lua LS. I'm just gonna put it above here and it's gonna be one for go please. Okay, so this is for go please. Uh, if you did watch my C, if you watched my C, C++, what, what I'm doing right here, basically this default one is just linking up each one of these functions on attach, on init, on uh, capabilities. This is just linking them up. This is just saying, hey, for each one of the LSPs in my default server list, um, set them up on attach equals on attach, on init equals on it. It's just passing them through. So on this specific one, since I don't want to default, what I want to do is not use the formatting that's built into Go Please. I want to disable the formatting. So what I'm going to do is instead of just putting on attach equals on attach, I'm going to have it actually equal a function where I'm pulling out the client and the, um, the buffer number and I'm telling it to not use formatting. So right here, this client server capabilities, document formatting provider, I'm telling it to be false. And the document range formatting provider, this disables the formatting for go please, okay? And then at the end of that, I'm just doing the unattached client buffer number. So this, this whole thing is just modifying the unattached. It's saying, hey, when you attach this, do not use the go please formatting. Now I pass the other ones straight through. And down here, I'm not actually sure if you need this or not, but for the command, I'm just using go please. But for the file type, I'm making sure that we are going to be using this go please, uh, the LS, this language server for go files, for go mod, go work and, and uh, go template. I think we could put, I feel like we could put um, the other one in here too. We'll, we'll take a look at that later. But I'm, I'm saying I want it to be used for all of these file types. And because this is a language server, it kind of needs to know where the root is. So down here, the root directory, I'm, I'm setting the LSP util root pattern. And I'm saying look for go work or go mod or dot git. If you can find one of those, go down directories until you find one of these and that is going to be your root directory. So we have a go mod file. Oh, sorry, let me show you the, this one. We have in our, this is the go project. So we have a go mod file here and a go sum and other, other stuff that we know this is the root directory of this project. So it's gonna be looking for that or, or a git, if it finds a dot git file, something like that. So if it finds one of these, it's gonna say that's the root directory. So those are kind of just simple simple things that are set up. I, again, I don't think we need this, but I've seen other people using this one, so I'm just using it as well. And where I'm getting some of this stuff from, not the on init capabilities and on attach, I'm getting that from what we followed before on the very first video that is coming from LSP config, but the specific things to go please, I'm actually getting those from the website. If you just Google um, go please, actually if I just back up here, this Google 
the go google source.com reference heads go please docs i'm in the documents for that i know it's might be quite hard because when i went to the github page it didn't have all the information i was looking for so i wanted to find different flag settings to turn on and off and i didn't find them in the the GitHub page, but I did find them in the, the Google source go page. So that's why I'm on this page. So again, if we're looking at, we're, we're looking in settings and we need to change things. So this analysis, um, I wanted to look for unused parameters. So this, this is an one that's in here. If we unuse parameters, this is something that's in analysis and it's a Boolean. You can turn it on or off. So I'm turning that one on. Um, complete unimported. So this this is going to add uh, if you haven't um, added imports, I believe. Yeah, packages that do that you don't currently have imported. So basically, if you start using something and you haven't um, imported it yet, this is going to this is going to fix that for you. Let's see here. Um, use placeholders. So when you're when you're um, setting up like function calls or method calls, it's going to fill in the placeholders of what parameters should be passed into those functions or methods. So I have that on true. And this static check adds more static analysis to the linting. So if we look at static check. Uh, enables additional um, analysis. So I've turned those on. You can read through this page and see anything else that you may like or or you may want to turn it off or whatever, but those are basically what I'm doing. I'm just adding a couple things and I'm also disabling formatting because I want to use different formatters. So there's nothing stopping you from, you know, just using the default as you saw earlier, that just works. It works out of the box, no problem. But um, I'm just doing a couple extra things here. Basically, I want to disable the formatter because I want to use a different formatter. And I want to have a couple little other options enabled. Okay, so I'm going to set this up. And the basic thing that we're going to see is we're going to be losing formatting on save. So, so I'm going to save this one. So I don't need to close this down. I just need to close the, the project that I want to see it happen on. So I'm going to close this and reopen it. We'll go into game.go. So the one thing that sh right off the bat we should notice is that we should have lost the, um, yeah, we've lost the formatting on save. Okay. So that's fine. That's what I wanted to happen. That's what I expected. So we have set up the LSP config. We have set up some additional parameters. As some of these parameters I actually um, I've seen in different places. I think I've seen them on the old 2.0 video for NVChad that was put out by Dreams of Code or something like that. He may have had sim some similar things. So I've kind of found these all over the place ran in random places and reading different places. So I don't know if these are all perfect or not. They have working for what I'm doing right now. So if, if you have better parameters or options that you're using, uh, share them, you know, to other people or if we made a mistake here, you know, let us know. So I'm going to move on to the conform. That's what we're using for the formatters. And I'm going to be using GoFumpt, which is the more strict Go, um, Go formatter. I'm also going to be using Go Imports Re Revisor, which is a it's a modified version of the Go Imports. And I'm going to use Go Lines, but Go Lines uh, seems to be having a bug in it right now. Uh, it's a feature or bug, I'm not really sure. We'll kind of see. So I'm going to be using these. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to kind of grab these and we'll go into the conform. So again, we have Mason conform too. So whatever we put into go into formatters by FT is automatically going to be picked up unless we put it on the ignore list. It's automatically going to be picked up and downloaded for us. Again, you don't have to if you don't want it downloaded automatically. You can go into 
each one of them and put put the packages you do not want on the ignore list so they're not it's not pushed upon you so the go lines only applies to go files um, all of them i've set up to use the go font um, and we'll look at these pages so this one and go imports revisor let's let's take a look at these real quick but i'm just going to show the the github pages so go font is a more strict version of uh go format basically um yeah i'm just using the more stricter one there's not really much to say about it it's another go formatter but it's a it's, it's a more strict version um, I'm also using Go lines, but again, we'll touch on, there appears to be a bug and I've seen bug reports on it. I don't know if it's going to be fixed or what's the story with it. And there is this Go imports revisor that I'm going to use as well. And this one, I'm going to add a switch to it, which is remove unused. I'm going to add this switch to it when we see it. So this is just a, another version of Go imports, but, um, it has some other options and features to it. So these are the ones I'm going to use for formatting. So for Go, I'm, I'm telling it to use all three of these formatters. And then for Go Mod, it's going to use these two. For Go Works, you know, these two go. So you get the idea. It's for when it, when it picks up a file type. Let's show the file type right here. If I go down on the bottom left-hand corner, if you're looking at the screen, if I set set, file type with a question mark on the back of it. It's going to tell me what file type this is, which should be just go. And it says the file type is go. So that's what's happening with the, with these. So when it says it's a go file type, it's going to run all three of these when I save or when I tell it to format. If I tell it to manually tell it to format, it'll do it. Or if I, whenever I'm saving, because the way we have it set up to, um, save on format or format on save okay but there is some extra things that i want to add to this so i i'm just going to configure a little bit of the formatters i'm adding the two options basically here so let's just grab this and these are it's going to be inside this formatters now you may not have this i believe in my first video on here I left this off or maybe commented out I cannot remember if you don't have this you just add it in it's just a table uh, formatters equals so oh it I actually just grabbed the table so I didn't need it there okay so what what we're doing here is and I didn't realize this uh, before but because because this is using the the minus we it won't let us just use the name if we try to do this it's not going to like that at all it, it only wants it doesn't want to use a minus sign we can use an underscore but not a minus sign but the problem is is it's the name has a minus sign in it so to get around that we can just put it in brackets and then um, also put it in double quotations So we have to do that on the Go Imports Revisor because it has that symbol in it that is not a, you know, that Lua doesn't really like. So we are just adding this one parameter. So we're not changing the arguments. We don't want to put just arg, if we just put args here, it'll just run this as the only argument and it just will not work. It'll, it'll just be like, I don't know what you're talking about because there's all these other arguments that are being run under the under the hood that we don't know about the actual command that's doing it. So if we just prepend the arguments, it's just going to add to it. It's just going to add to the argument list that it's already created. It's going to add this remove unused, which was on the, uh, the website here for, what is it? Go import this one right down here. This is go imports revisor. And it's just to use an additional option to remove unused imports. So I'm just adding that option. So basically for 
it's just configuring the go imports revisor this is just very simple that's the that's the whole bit that's just saying add uh, pre-pin to the arguments that one thing that we want and i'm doing the same thing with go lines here i don't have the funny character in go line so i don't need to put it in brackets and and double quotations so i'm still prepending it and i'm just putting max length is 80 that's saying it's going to start trying to break up lines that are 80 characters or longer you know so that's just a simple thing I, i'm sure everybody knows about the whole 80 lines you could change it to whatever you want it to be um, but we're going to see kind of the go lines doesn't quite work as expected so i'm going to save this so we should get our uh, formatting back because we lost our formatting before so if i remove this here or well i already did it above as well these should automatically be fixed when i save oh uh, i'm sorry i need to close this first let's go back into it okay so we have these two lines here in our imports that are not formatted correctly and now they are formatted correctly so that's great so um go lines it it does this right here so it's it's breaking this up for us which is really nice um i don't know if i how i feel about all the zeros being on their own line but eh, okay but it doesn't do everything it messes up so it messes these up if they're in if statements um it it messes up the parameters and it doesn't break them up so i've seen bug reports and go lines about this there's no configuration that i know of that you turn on it seems just like it's a bug and because if we see parameters that are not in if statements let's find something else um, So here we go. This is not in an if statement, but I kind of want a function call somewhere, a method call. Kind of want to show it where it's um, working as expected. So right here, this this is how it should be working, right? Because it's 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 calling render. Um, copy x you know which is an sdl uh function call and it on the parameters are all lined up down here but inside these if statements here here's an if statement but it, it doesn't do it here on the if statements it leaves them all so i'm kind of at a loss i did some searching about this on the go lines and i ran into bug reports and errors and i didn't find a solution and i'm not entirely sure if they're interested in fixing it. If it's a feature or a bug, it looks like a bug to me. But I'm I don't know the whole story about this one, so it's it's a minor annoyance, but I just know that it's there. It's part of Go lines. So right now we have um let's see, can we go to let's go down here. Looking for something that I've defined, a um, method or somewhere that I've defined. Okay, I'm going to go here. Let's see. Go to definition works. Is it going to complain about that? Yeah, see, there we go. Our our linting is working correctly. Our formatting we've already seen is kind of working. It's putting our lines back. We do get lines being broken up by... Because um, my file was not saved this way. So this has been done by Go Lines. I think I need to make it longer before it kicks in. There we go. 
So GoLines is doing this, but it's not doing it on the if statement. So I don't really know about that. But I kind of want to show this um, program off real quick. So this is uh, Asteroids written in Go. Um, I have a C version of it as well and uh, maybe a couple Python versions laying around. I'm not really sure. But um, this is one of the programs that I'll show how to make later. So it's got a little Asteroids title screen. We got level one. For each level, we get um, that amount of asteroids that it says. And it looks like it's off screen here. So if I can shoot it. And that last guy there, I'll go to level two. And it, you'll just keep floating. Where, where did I go? So if you if you give yourself thrust in a direction, you're going to keep going that way unless you give a counter. And if you run into the, you collide, you get a little immunity for like three seconds or something like that. And the score is decided by how many shots you've made. So basically, every time you make a shot, your value is worth less, the bullet's value. So until you, I think you get to like 100 shots, the last one, I'm not sure if it has any value. And then it's multiplied by your level, and I can't remember all of it. I've made it co overly complicated. But um, when an asteroid is hit, it breaks into a smaller piece, and they go, um, they go perpendicular to where you've shot them from yeah they'll go the op you know at a 90 degree angle from wherever you shot them from so if i shoot this one here they they're moving at a 90 degree angle from the bullet but they're also moving in the original direction if they were moving towards me they're still moving towards me see that they're moving away from the um uh, to the uh, 90 degrees to the bowl of that. Okay, so I'm just going to end this. I'm just gonna. Oh, yeah, you have little ships in the top left-hand corner. It tells you how many lives you have. You get one ship each level, and that's the end of that. Okay. So let's look at the where we're at again for the. There we go. So what we've changed here is basically tree sitter. We at we've added a couple Go files to it. And then in LSP config, we have added to our server list that should be installed Go Please. And then we've also configured one. And again, this part right here is very much like if you watch C and C++, I'm just telling the formatting to be turned off. Down here, this is stuff that I found different places, basically. Um, the file types, I'm just making sure it's, it can open these file types. The root directory, uh, we need to know where the root directory of the project we're working on is. And then I'm just setting a couple basic parameters that, that is on that um, Go Google source page. Over here. This settings, this Go Google source, and it's the referent documentation for the settings. And this has different things that you can turn on and off basically and you'll see the um where is it the so one of the one of the items the um uh, unused parameters is inside of analysis inside of analysis table so that's why you see that it's inside of this analysis table whereas the other ones are not the other ones are just inside the go please table. So that is how it is described. So it's inside this analysis table and the other ones are just inside the go please table. So that's why it's set up the way that it is for, for those. Okay, so we did not need to, um, we did not need to do anything in linting because we're getting our linting from um, go please. So in formatting and conform, we have added Go, Go Mod, Go Work, and Go Template. And we are just setting it up. Go Lines is for just the Go file. 
and we are just uh, modifying the Go Imports Revisor to remove unused and the Go Lines for the max max length to be 80. And you can change that. Th those are just, I'm just explaining the options I've done. So with all that, I, I want to show that I've actually put all of this in the original file and commented them out. So you don't have to actually type all this in. I just kind of wanted to walk through it all. But let's back up out of here. I want to close this. And I'm going to actually remove my file and re-pull it. So I'm going to go over here to Programming Rainbow. I'm just going to copy this URL. I'm going to remove, let's see. I'm going to remove, this is the config.envim. This is like just getting rid of my entire configuration for NeoVim, the NVChat, everything. It's just going to get rid of it. And then also we're going to, um, let's see, local, share, get rid of that and the cache. So that's everything kind of gone from my NeoVim NVChad configuration, all the downloaded installed packages from Mason, that's that's just all gone now, okay? So if I git clone and then I put it back so I'm grabbing my default one from my repository. This is going to look slightly different, okay? So when I start it up, it's going to start grabbing packages and set Lua all up again. It's not going to set up um, Go. It's just going to set up Lua the way it was in the original video. Over here. Sorry, I haven't been looking at YouTube. So um, it's all set up. So. Basically what I've done here is I've added all the stuff, but I've disabled it. So this is what you will get at the, if you've gone through the first video, everything's still set up, but it's just set up for the Lua, just the basic Lua stuff. So for um, tree sitter, I've added in stuff for C, C++, for Go, for Python. I'm, I'll probably add in more stuff later, but everything I've added in that is past the very first video, I'm disabling it. So if you ever use this, you're not getting a whole bunch of stuff added in. You're just getting the basic setup with everything ready for you to configure with Lua up and running correctly, but nothing has been added. So so this Python is not being added, make, no, none of these stuff are being added. You can uncomment them and then they will be added, but they're not there right now. So if we go into LSP config, we have Clang D, we have Go Please, we have PyWrite for Python, but they're all commented out, so they're not they're not installed. Um, PyWrite is using a default setup; it's just using this down here. Clang is using its own. Go Please is using its own. Lua is using its own. Now the Lua one is part of the original configuration video that we did, just to get it, a basic system up and running, so that is always there. But anything else I add to it. I will add it here, but I will add it disabled. And linting, again, um, for Python, we're using Flake 8, but it's disabled. Uh, Lua check is there, obviously, it's enabled. Uh, for formatters, Lua uh, style Lua is you know uh, turned on, of course. But the C, C++, Go, Python, every, all that's disabled. All the configuration for the formatters, that is outside of Lua, which basically there is none. There, uh, it's just using this the default one for style Lua. Um, so they're all disabled. So that basically I've added the code here, and I will update it if something changes, if there's a bug or, or if I'm adding more languages, but they're all disabled because you may not want that. You may be, you're programming in Lua and you don't need Python and Go and C++ installed on your system. You don't need all that junk. Or you might not want to use the way I have it set up, so I've just disabled all that. So if we look at Mason, we can see that Lua is the only thing installed. Nothing else is going on here.
yes install info and we we do i think we have python and and c i didn't install these 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 would have been even from the very first video they're automatically installed by tree sitter but but fish is something that we told it to install from from the first video um lua lua docs markdown these are all original printf is there python is there but i didn't i didn't add python it's just there by default but the go stuff is not there okay so again i'm going to exit this so if we want to um add in the tree sitter support and all that we we see that it's all kind of disabled right now so all I would do if I wanted to enable it, I would just go here and uncomment that, save that. And then I would go to LSP config and I would uncomment go please here. And then down here, I would find the go please code. I would just uncomment that and save it. And there's nothing in linting for Go, so conform, because uh, Go please already has its own linting. That's why there's no linting there. So right here, I am just uncommenting the Go ones, and then I'm going to go down here. Now this formatter is, is uh, here, but everything inside of the formatters is commented out. So I'm just going to go down here to Go, and I'm just going to uncomment everything in the Go part. Okay? Now, if I restart this, or I don't even need to restart this, I can go over to here and restart this. It should start, it's telling me it's installing things at the bottom here. Go please. And when I, a tree sitter is going to kick off when I go to open the file for the first time. So, see, tree sitter is installing. Now it's done. It's installed. So I've kind of set that up. So you can follow the video. You can do all this stuff yourself. If you just kind of want to see it and uncomment it or something like that, it's there. But I don't want to mess up. I want to keep it in the default state it is for just a basic configuration um, for using Lua because you need Lua to configure it um, with nothing else turned on. But it's still there disabled. So anybody that wants to use it has it there for them. And yeah, I think that's going to be everything. So hope that helps anybody who is trying to use NeoVim or NVChat and they're trying to use Go. This is just basic setup. More advanced people probably know much better ways to do all these things, but uh, that's a basic setup and I hope that was entertaining or educational and if you have any problems, let me know. Okay, have a nice day. All right, bye.